Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is the Milliman study of COVID 19's effect on healthcare costs. Now, the Milliman organization just released this actuarial study last week, and it is fantastic. I will leave a link to it in the show notes, and I wanted to share it with you today because it comes to a similar conclusion to what A Healthcare Z talked about in previous videos as well. Now, the Milliman folks did 18 different scenarios. So they didn't just look at one scenario, they looked at a whole bunch of different scenarios in terms of the infection rate and how much care avoidance and just uh, what they call care elimination. In other words, somebody might have had a symptom like a headache and they would have gone to receive treatment for that, but now they're not going to receive that treatment because maybe it just resolved itself on its own. So there was, there was cost from a condition that ended up being not delayed, but just didn't occur at all. So they looked at all these different scenarios along with various different infection rates of coronavirus as well. So they looked at 18 of these, right? And they modeled out, now this is based upon their own clinicians, their own doctors at Milliman. Those scenarios modeled out decreases in care of 30%, 45%, and 60%. Note that those are similar numbers to the A Healthcare Z numbers that I used in regards to what Virginia Mason Hospital had seen at 30%, and in the physician surveys um, at 65%. Now, they also model out, as a result of the economic collapse from coronavirus, unemployment of 17.5%. Now, keep in mind, unemployment peaked during the Great Recession at 10%. So you're talking a full seven percentage points more or 70% higher rate of unemployment. So just know that these models, I mean, that's significant. Could unemployment be even higher? Sure, but 17% is a whopping high level of unemployment, even compared to the Great Recession of 2008. Now, to the actual cost decreases. So they said that if care was either avoided delayed or eliminated because of coronavirus, in other words, not getting the colonoscopies, not getting the spine surgery, not getting the joint replacements, et cetera, et cetera, that the decrease in healthcare costs would be between $140 billion and $375 billion of decreased healthcare costs. And this is across all payers, so Medicare, Medicaid, and commercial insurance. So that is only through June. That's just, we've got our particular, this does not keep into account, okay, well, was there delayed uh, or pent up demand for care? In other words, you know, somebody did need to have, let's say their knee replaced and they didn't get it done until June, but they ended up getting it done in October, okay? So some of that could come back in the, in the form of delayed care that comes back in the back half of 2020, except, of course, that coronavirus could either have a second wave or could really not diminish in the first place. And we could just see the continuation of the social distancing and the concern about going to healthcare providers go through the end of 2020. So they modeled out that scenario as well. So if this care avoidance occurs, not just through the end of June, but through the end of 2020, then they're estimating a decrease of 75,000 to 575, excuse me, 75 billion to 575 billion dollars. Okay, so note here that the low end is actually less than the 140. So why is that? That seems a little curious. My reading of the report seems to indicate, well, of course, if you end up having much more coronavirus through the end of 2020, that there's going to be increased healthcare costs for some people and in some areas related to actual testing and treatment of coronavirus, which would, um, which would cost money. In other words, it would decrease the decrease in healthcare costs. Whereas if it's only through June, the actual amount uh, applied to testing and treatment would be, would be a smaller amount. So it's a little counterintuitive, it's a little confusing, but I would ask that you actually go directly to the report if you'd like to read more about it. Okay, so they're saying, look, you know, but keep in mind, for like three, three trillion in healthcare spend, you're talking like a, over a sixth down, potentially, over the course of 2020. Now, specifically for commercial insurance, they draw that out separately as well. They look at Medicaid, Medicare, and commercial insurance separately. For just commercial insurance, okay, for just for employers, whether they be self-funded or fully insured, they're saying it's going to be down $75 billion to $325 billion through the end of 2020. So here you have an incredibly reputable, highly competent actuarial firm that is saying that overall healthcare costs will go down. And the implication of that for employers is that if you're self-funded, your health care costs will go down. And the implication for fully insured employers is that you will either get money back 
because of the minimum loss ratio, or you should have a lower renewal. And if neither of those two things happen, then it would be wise to take a look at this study with your insurance carrier and ask why that's the case. Okay, now, the actual verbiage from the report is, we project that the effect of service deferral and elimination will greatly exceed the testing and treating of COVID-19 in 2020. In other words, yes, there will be, there will be costs associated with COVID-19, but the amount of decrease in overall care from the elective procedures, et cetera, et cetera, being, uh, being delayed or not done at all will be dramatically more th than any increase in testing or actual treatment of coronavirus. Now, they break it down geographically as well, and they say that this will happen almost everywhere in America with like two exceptions, the New York City metro area and New Orleans, Louisiana. So just know that if you're not in one of those two areas, you can expect these numbers to apply to you. So I really want to applaud Milliman for their fantastic work on this. Again, please read the study yourself. It's very good. And thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.